Welcome back to Echo Ridge and another video in our Chaos Crew play along series. This time the players decided on a vanilla game. And as you can see, they have a lot of room to work with. So I'm sure we're going to see some amazing creations. The first interesting thing about this planetoid is its rhyme. So most parts of this planetoid start off pretty, pretty cool. We have some nice areas here that normally have to do with point of interest buildings. But just because this area started off warm, it's not going to take it long at all for the surrounding area to chill this place out. The players did start with all the story traits as of August of this year when this play along started. So along with the Hermit, we also have the Somnium Synthesizer, the Critter Fluxomatic, and of course all the fossil systems as well. Another fun thing about this colony is there's going to be a lot of vents and geysers. And because it's rhyme, they're a little bit more difficult to find using the old temperature overlay trick. And what I mean by that is normally they sort of pop out pretty easily because neutronium doesn't have a temperature. Well, there's not a whole lot of temperature in most of this map, but you can see some of them sitting here. There's also a lot of these random oil fields all around the planetoid, which not only might provide the players a nice source of heat, but will also give them convenient access to things like diamond, iron, fossil, and even some beautiful lead. And from first glance, it looks like there's at least five of these locations throughout the map. Look at this huge rock of solid crude oil. There's 3,200 kilos in each tile, and it's at minus 70 degrees. There's also an absolute ton of oil reservoirs here in the oil biome down below. So it's going to be interesting to see what players do with this huge oil biome, but I think what I'm looking forward to the most to seeing is what they do with the magma biome. Because there's one, two, three, four, five volcanoes available to do some sort of super sauna. So without further ado, let's go check on the first colony. This first colony is the Frozen Crew of Chaos, presented by Mirage. We're in cycle 2104, where we have a population of 38. That includes not only Echo, but also Gordon Ramsay. I appreciate you stopping by, Gordon Ramsay. I love how everybody's name has to do with what they do, to include Random Line Cook and Le Chef. Speaking of which, look at the food and living area here. We've got an absolute metric ton of shovels. Now, while they're being tamed in this ranch, it looks like they're only being fed in this ranch. So this is sort of the starvation chamber, hence the reason there's over 500,000 calories of barbecue and meat. We also have a bunch of wonderful Pakus, and I believe the newest update probably broke this sort of setup with the Pakus, because as you can see, they're all miserable and confined now. Which reminds me, I'm going to have to design a new Paku plank that aligns with the new critter system. And what are you doing in here? How did you get out of your cage? Of note, some of the things that don't look 100% right are because everybody plays with different mods and different systems in their colony. And I don't necessarily use all the mods that Mirage may have used. Look at this primary living area that for some reason has a bunch of locked doors. This is what I'm talking about. I don't necessarily know for sure this is supposed to be that way. And yet another player rubbing it in that they have a payphone. When am I ever going to get a payphone? Of course, Mirage may have just left the bottom one unlocked so they only can get in through this side. But this living area is nice and expansive. We have another great hall here with a built-in carbon skimmer. I kind of like this system. I think I need to do this more. By putting the carbon skimmer in the corners, which happens to be where a lot of the carbon dioxide likes to flow to, you're able to destroy it pretty easily. I don't know why this Echo is sunburned and exhausted but I feel like this Echo needs a better place to live. You can see each room is adorned with some wonderful artifacts. So you know Mirage has been doing a lot of space missions. In fact, it looks like they have the technology and have made it all the way out to the Temporal Terror layer. And that's thanks to a liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen rockets. We also have a nice space canner system here that is rocking a network quality of 76% with a huge bunker door system. What this does is whenever there is asteroids coming down, all that regolith is destroyed and then collected. That way the shovels can go keep eating it. We have plenty of solar panels here. 
not that necessarily need it because we have a petroleum boiler being powered by a full volcano. Some other neat things that Mirage has done with some vents and geysers is they've geotuned this saltwater geyser twice. So that means the salt water is coming out at 115 degrees and has an average output of almost four kilos per second. Not that they needed the power of those steam turbines because look at all the natural gas generators. Yeah, there's a sour gas boiler here if I were to bet. And here it is. I always love seeing these. Oil is going to come in here, get superheated thanks to four thermo aqua tuners. It turns into petroleum, more heat added, the petroleum turns into sour gas, and the sour gas bounces up and over down through here, where it's then super chilled down into liquid methane, which does give us a nice supply of sulfur. That liquid methane is then pumped into this container here, where it's basically heated back up into natural gas. And a lot of natural gas it is, where it takes all of these pumps to supply this absolutely massive amount of natural gas generators, which then also supplies you with another metric ton of polluted water. There's another petroleum boiler down here. This may be the one responsible for actually feeding the sour gas boiler. Oh. I appreciate the nod, Mirage. Oh, I love this system here. All that polluted water that is coming from all the natural gas is getting boiled in this system here so they have an infinite supply of dirt. One of the thermo aqua tuners is keeping the steam turbines cold. The other is dumping its chill into a cold box that the liquid tepidizer is keeping warm enough to keep the thermo aqua tuner running, keeping this box nice and hot to boil the polluted water. The steam turbines then take all that steam it condenses into clean water where it comes all the way down here, all the way over here, and helps make more oil. I love the bottom of the colony. It has all the containers. We have crude oil, polluted water, petroleum, water, brine, and salt water. Another item that Mirage was pretty proud of was the industrial brick that they built early on in the save. It's equipped with a couple of oxalite refineries, three metal refineries, and more power sitting in some power rooms. This is probably what got Mirage from the mid game into the end game before they were able to build all of these late game systems here. My goodness, that is a lot of transit tube access points. As a final point, notice that Mirage decided to keep the Gravitas building in. It's fun to see the players that like to leave the point of interest buildings and the players that like to remove them. So well done and a shout out to Mirage for a wonderful colony. I appreciate you submitting it. This next colony is the Chaos Boat submitted by community member Kindly Boat. And what we're going to be taking a look at is a colony of firsts for Kindly Boat. This is their first time getting into mid to late game. They started experimenting with rocketry. It's their first petroleum boiler. And it's also the first time they were able to tinker with aqua tuners, steam turbines, and oil. The first highlight for me is the wonderful geothermal sauna. Look at all this glorious heat being injected into the sauna which is a pretty good size too, running five steam turbines. They even started making use of some blast shots, and those are riding a rail that goes all the way up to the top of the colony, where they were protecting their new rocketry program. Kindly Boat also decided to leave the Gravitas room, which reminds me, wouldn't it be awesome if we could build elevators? I know we have transit tubes, but maybe we could use elevators in those sort of early to mid game. Not only did Kindly Boat have the geothermal sauna down at the bottom, they also have this dirty brick here towards the top, running a few petroleum generators, some natural gas generators, and some coal generators. We have some door crushers to be able to handle all the carbon dioxide. Well, at least the carbon dioxide that the slicksters aren't eating. We also have some nice apartments here with a lot of very cool wallpaper designs. Magma checkers? I don't have magma checkers yet. Aqua plaid prints? Oh, they even have pedal checkers. I need more wallpaper. We have a nice recreation room here that has the jukebox, the espresso machine, and an arcade cabinet. We're running a bunch of critters here, some naturally planted arbor trees to provide a full supply of dirt. Then we also have some stone hatches that are looking like they're helping make some of the wonderful frost burgers which seems to be the highest rated food on the colony. Speaking of which, here's the kitchen. We have the gas range with the electric grills, but we also have a microbe musher where they're churning out infinite lice loaf. Why, Kindly Boat? Why? 
It is cycle 776, and these poor duplicants are shoving lice loaf into their bellies. It does look like they were making the transition over to berry sludge, though. We have the sleet wheat and bristle blossoms here. And I found the water weed that is being used for the lettuce and the frost burgers. But for the life of me, I can't find any meal lice. Maybe this was very old meal lice that they have turned into lice loaf. Kindly Boat is also using some transit tubes, which to be honest is almost a must have on colonies this size. Otherwise your duplicates are going to spend half their day getting from point A to point B. They also have a couple of nice natural gas geysers with built in storage. I like doing this when I have enough room and time. And that way you don't have to worry about the heat being caused from the natural gas being stored elsewhere on your colony. You can just store it inside your natural gas room. Oh, we also have a wonderful geothermally powered petroleum boiler. Very nice. It is set at a full 10 kilos. And I love the location of the geothermal spike inside the obsidian, because that means wherever this obsidian is going, it has access to the magma's heat all the way over here. So it takes it a lot longer for all of this to turn into igneous rock. I really like Kindly Boat's use of the geothermal power on this planetoid. And finally, they were able to complete a monument. And this one has the Slickster head. Nice touch. Nice work again, and I appreciate the submission to Kindly Boat. This next colony is The Good Vibes, submitted by community member Kutai, who self-admittedly likes to use a couple of exploits, so we're gonna have some fun with this one. One of the first things I noticed when exploring Kutai's colony was the fact that they were using some polluted water in order to provide oxygen for the colony. Every once in a while, they deconstruct one of these tanks, and it drops off a giant bucket of polluted water which then off gases, and because of the way deodorizers work, they can reach through these tiles, grab some of the polluted oxygen, and turn it right back into regular oxygen. Kutai also likes to stack buildings, hence the reason it looks like everybody's having the most uncomfortable potty session ever. And because we might need some more oxygen, we have a few soggy Rodriguez's here, and yes, this is over 4,000 kilos worth of hydrogen gas in each tile. Not to be beat, the oxygen has over 19,000 kilos in each tile. We also have some nice infinite storage up here where there's over 18,000 kilos worth of petroleum in every single tile here. The Good Vibes colony is protected by a whole line of bunker tiles. This couldn't have been cheap, considering every single bunker door is a half a ton of steel. No matter though, Kindly Boat has 182 tons. They're also running a lot of Drecos. They're also running some hatches and some sovols. On the power front, we have a volcano that's spewing out magma, which is transferring heat into this room with, you know, a couple of stacked steam turbines. We also have a couple of instances of geothermal power. What's interesting is this little geothermal spike is providing some decent wattage and it's using its own thermal aqua tuner. I don't know if this was a test bed or what, but they decided to duplicate it over here with, once again, a bunch of steam turbines. I don't even know how many that is. More on the exploit front, the saltwater geyser has been going off for quite some time because there is 182,000 in each tile. Yeah, I don't think water is going to be an issue. Okay, Kutai, what have you done? Somehow, Kutai has four tons worth of molten steel in every single tile here. Let me follow this ridiculous train. How in the world? All right, this area is all vacuumed out. So it's easy to make things very, very hot because there's no atmosphere to cool them. But it looks like once upon a time, it was being pumped in through this pump here. But then there's this system over here as well, which has another five tons of molten steel in every single tile. Not to mention, oh my goodness, three million kilos? I think that's three million kilos worth of molten steel. What have you done, Kutai? There are no connections here, save for this one pipe right here. So I don't have a real good ability to figure out what happened or how they were able to do this, but it is definitely interesting to look at. Three million kilos of molten steel. And then there's this metal refinery. Metal refinery is not exactly what you think it is. Now it's being supplied with all different types of coolants, but Kutai has managed to figure out how to store, well, a lot inside this metal refinery. This is known as the infinite liquid in the refinery bug, 
And I'm assuming this is where they did all their metal refining? Because I don't see another metal refinery on this planetoid. Now while Kutai is willing to exploit everything in the game, they were very careful with their nosh beans and their sleet wheats. We have a nice seed vault here, just in case, you know, something bad might happen. Like deconstructing this metal refinery. Let's see what happens, shall we? Oh yeah, this can't be good. Oh, the poor base. You might want to get out of there, dupes. This is still 240 kilos worth of steam, and it's still expanding. Before all the dupes die, I really gotta open up some of this. So let's go in through here. We'll deconstruct this tile and this tile. And then we'll deconstruct this tile and this tile. Oh, you've gotta love it when chaos reigns. Look at all the damage this one metal refinery has caused. This is why we don't play with exploits, folks. Oh, poor Stinky. Tried to go down here to deconstruct the tile. That probably wasn't the best move. Camille's doing just fine, though. Oh, here it comes. Here comes all that molten steel. Really, there's no triage beds? Yeah, they're starting to drop like flies around here. But before they go, I really need to open up this one, too. Let me put a priority on this. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like any of the duplicates are going to be able to help me out here. So I'm going to use sandbox mode and open it up that way. Here we go. Oh, isn't this wonderful? Well, Kutai, I appreciate you submitting the base. I think I had just as much fun destroying it as I did exploring it. Unfortunately, this colony is no longer in service. Thanks again, Kutai. This next colony is the Chaos Crew Echo Along by Heelstorm. And at first, I didn't know what they meant about Echo Along until I saw all the dupes. I'm looking forward to seeing what's going on in this colony because as you can see, there's a lot of deliveries going on. We also have almost 20 million calories worth of food. First up is this wonderful dirty brick here, which happens to be Heelstorm's first dirty brick. And what's even better about this is they're not even destroying the carbon dioxide. They're just having a bunch of molten slicksters eat it. We also have a whole bunch of petroleum generators and steam turbines, providing a lot of convenient power. Oh my goodness, that is a lot of extra slicksters. 208 to be precise. Ooh, it's a rare hydrogen vent tamer. I love seeing these because if you've never tried to tame a hydrogen vent, they can be a little tricky because the hydrogen comes out at 500 C. We have one thermal aqua tuner, basically brute forcing the cooling here, making sure that the steel gas pump doesn't end up overheating before it can gobble up more of this hydrogen, which we're keeping at least a kilo of hydrogen in the room and that way there's enough of an atmosphere to keep chilled so when the hydrogen vent does erupt, it just doesn't instantly destroy the gas pump. Nice work on this one, Heelstorm. Now, you wouldn't believe it if I told you, based on this entire space program, but this is Heelstorm's first space travel in the base game. They must have learned a lot of their space techniques from Spaced Out, because this is a pretty advanced space program here. We have 100% scan network quality, being provided by the space scanners and a bunker door system I think you're gonna love. Notice there's bunker doors and doors, which is controlled by quite a bit of automation. But then when those doors do finally open, we have a nice bucket brigade using all these auto sweepers that push all the materials all the way over here where they're eventually loaded into this one conveyor loader, which is sent through a system to make sure everything's nice and chill where it looks like they once had a nice vol farm. Oh, they have a gassy moo. In fact, they have an entire gassy moo farm. What are they doing with this light sensor? Oh, I know exactly what they're doing. When this light sensor does not detect enough lux, it turns on this sun lamp, and that way the gas grass can continue to grow. Nice use of the new light sensor building, Hillstorm. We have a couple of wonderful monuments here and here, and a nice little living area with a few recreation buildings to include the mechanical surfboard, a jukebox, an arcade cabinet, even a sauna, a juicer. Oh, they have the dreamboat bed. And this is a dream journal, which means King Echo. Absolutely love it. King Echo even has access to a vertical wind tunnel, an espresso machine, and a beach chair. It's funny, when I was first looking at all the echoes, I didn't notice there was a King Echo. And there goes King Echo right back to sleep. Here is the Somnium Synthesizer, and you can see that they have made some pajamas. Wearing the pajamas will give you a minus eight to athletics, but 
it'll also cause them to create more dream journals. In fact, a lot of the Echo Dupes around here are wearing the jammies. It allows the Somnium Synthesizer to activate, analyzes those dreams, which gives all the duplicates the maximum aptitude buff, which is minus 25% to stress, plus five to athletics, strength, science, plus 500% to piloting, and plus five to machinery. That plus 500% to piloting makes some of these space missions a lot quicker. Speaking of which, Hillstorm actually completed a full achievement run on this colony. And because of course, they also have a pair of payphones. I'm glad to see King Echo's not the only one living well, because all of these dupes also have a full range of benefits. I like the use of ranches down here in the bottom of the base. We have some vertical hatch ranches and some vertical Draco ranches. On the power front, Heelstorm is also using geothermal power and quite a lot of it too. You'll notice these steam turbines are all sitting in a power plant. So each one of them is supplying almost 1.3 kilowatts. And then all the igneous rock that's being cored out of here heads into this system here, which provides even more power for the colony and also cools off the igneous rock pretty well. I like this design and I may use it in the future. It's like a small sauna that is ripping the heat out of the igneous rock and then a debris chiller, which is further chilling it. And it's all being chilled using polluted water through one thermo aqua tuner. We have a full transit tube network that's going to many places around the colony. Heelstorm also likes the soggy Rodriguez. You can see here we have quite a bit of oxygen ready to be supplied to the colony itself and plenty of hydrogen to keep the whole thing going. Another thing I like is you could tell this was the old portion of the base, sort of the ruins of the early game base before they set up shop in this wonderful area here. So once again, Heelstorm, I appreciate the sweet accommodations and for you supplying your colony for all of us to take a look at. Very nicely done. This next colony is submitted by Sardinamalus. Now, I don't think we're going to start off on the right foot here. As you can see, this colony is all about pay. Now, I'm not sure if they're just rubbing it in my face that I don't have a payphone, or it's the fact that every single dupe on this colony is a pay. Well, other than the hermit. This one, you're in for a real treat. Most every place in this colony was made in a round sort of fashion, completely breaking from the tradition of just squaring everything up, which makes it absolutely gorgeous to look at. This primary living area, complete with both bouncy castle beds, Grand Prix beds, and the Nap Master beds, has some wonderful duplicate gyms and some very interesting looking great halls. Everything here is just gorgeous to look at. Now, Sardinamalus is using the Two Tiles mod, which helps give the colony a nice look. There's also some recreation buildings here to include a pair of jukeboxes and a pair of arcade cabinets, not to mention the vertical wind tunnel sitting right on top of a very cool looking pip farm. Notice the farm is completely wild. They're not being tamed. In fact, there's not even any doors on the farm. We also have three mechanical surfboards sitting next to four geotuners, a beautiful transport hub, complete with four transit tube access points that'll bring you to just about any other orb sitting on the planetoid, because you don't want to go outside because it's filled with 11.7 kilos worth of carbon dioxide. The painstaking process that Sardinamalus must have used to make every single room circular is very, very impressive. This was a massive achievement and one that I hope they're very proud of. Oh, they also have the Swell Swell. This is one of my favorite paintings that you can get from the supply closet. I mean, even the rocket area has been completely rounded out. This is a nice use of vacuum with all these power transformers sitting up in the vacuum of space. That heat's not going anywhere. Look at this beautiful, cool steam vent tamer. Making everything circular like this had to be a very interesting and fun way to play because it really turns all the designs on its head. Here's a thimble reed farm, another transportation network on the right side of the base. Even the water storage is in round containers. This is one beautiful giant buffer tank. Oh, look at this majestic beauty. This is a geothermal spike. And this dual petroleum boiler setup is processing 20 kilos worth of crude oil per second. That is a lot of power. We also have oil storage here, petroleum storage here, a volcano tamer here, which is responsible for cleaning any and all water. 
on the planetoid. You can tell because there's dirt and salt down here. Look at all the oil wells, all in nice little round rooms. I mean, each oil well has its own transit tube access point. The amount of power being used by this colony is very, very impressive. And what's even crazier is all this was done with potentially only 13 duplicates. Look at the amount of super coolant they've got stored here. I was off looking for more of the power production, but I suppose a lot of it is being provided by all these solar panels, which pretty much run about halfway across the top of the colony. They also have a beautiful round battery box here storing all that power. A beautiful spawn setup. Notice that this is four half Rodriguez's. Here's the liquid oxygen and the liquid hydrogen production center. Another masterpiece in both function and form. Here's some more of the power generation. And here's the thing, it was hard to even notice because when have you ever seen a power plant look like this? So big kudos to Sardin Amalas for putting on an absolute masterclass on what is possible in oxygen not included. This is one of the most beautifully designed and executed bases I've ever seen. This next colony is called Turtles All the Way Down and was submitted by El Turtle Hermit. And you can tell that old turtle is a quintessential member of the community. Why may you ask? because apparently everybody just loves the fact that I can't get a payphone. This entire turtle area is filled with nothing but payphones. Well, and this expressive genius here that's sticking their tongue out. Yes, this is obviously turtle sticking their tongue out at me because I don't have access to the wonderful payphones. And I know what you're asking, Echo, just spend some of your spools and then you have access to the payphone forever. But I can't spend any of my spools, because what if I need them? I know, my brain is broken. We can probably blame one of the Final Fantasy series for doing it to me. After all, you can't ever use those elixirs, because what if you need them? So while the turtles are probably the first thing that jump out at you, I have to take a quick look at this wonderful sauna. This is the biggest sauna I've ever seen. And I've built some massive industrial saunas in my time. But El Turtle Hermit has one up me. There are six volcanoes in this sauna, not to mention a bunch of gas vents like the hydrogen vent here. So all of its heat is also dumped into the sauna. There are a total of 44 steam turbines. Now, none of them are running right now, but they could because there's 210 degrees worth of steam ready to be ripped out by the steam turbines. But they won't be until the sauna gets above 225 degrees. Not to mention, there are plenty of solar panels providing a bunch of power as well. And they stretch pretty much the entire width of the base. And oh my goodness, I just realized they made the Gravitas building look like a turtle as well. <laughs> Very well done. El Turtle Hermit has decided to go with meteor blasters and every single area of the colony is being protected. The living quarters are once again inside of a turtle as is the massage room and the jukebox. The Great Hall, adorned with, of course, more payphones. And oh my goodness, I just realized they have 168 million calories, most of which in surf and turf. Here's the electrolyzer setup, providing everybody some oxygen. But here is the Paku farm. Now this Paku plank may not be functioning for much longer because of the newest update. I still have to do quite a bit of research to figure out the best way to do it. But for now, there are 644 Pakus sitting in this one tile. And I'm still getting 60 frames per second, thanks to the fact that Turtle has vacuumed out the entirety of the base other than where the turtles are. We have a Draco Ranch down here, an evolution chamber with, of course, more payphones, the printing pod next to, yes, payphones, I mean, I can just imagine El Turtle Hermit just giggling the entire time they were building all of these payphones. Well played. Well played. They have a massive collection of artifacts down here in the bottommost turtle. Oh, look at this beautiful debris chiller. I've always fancied a good old debris chiller, and this one does not disappoint. All the igneous rock coming through here is definitely going to be chilled, considering all these tiles are sitting at minus 27 degrees. And it doesn't hurt the fact that they have four thermo aqua tuners capable of doing that chilling. And all of them are in series, 
So if one of them doesn't cool it down to minus 26, the next one will try, or the next one will try, or the next one. And all that igneous rock is coming from all these volcanoes, picked up and then rotated through the sauna, which is important because a sauna this size requires a lot of heat to maintain. This colony was another absolute delight to take a look at. I've never seen a colony made out of turtles. I've also never seen that many payphones. So special shout out and thanks to El Turtle Hermit for a very interesting colony submission. This Chaos Crew play along began in August of this year. And just like the rest of them, they run for about three months. At the end of which, some of the community members submit their save file for possible inclusion in this video. But we also had a huge community participate in the Chaos Crew play along this time. Some of which you're seeing the screenshots of their colony on the screen now. If you are interested in joining the next Chaos Crew play along, jump on over into our Discord. That channel is host to hundreds of people all talking about their unique experiences while playing on identical seeds. And if you feel intimidated by that, because you may not have as much experience, I'd ask you not to worry about that at all. Because our community is one of cooperation and not competition. It's a great place to learn and talk about a game that we all love. Also in that channel, towards the end of each Chaos Crew play along, the community votes on what kind of seed they're going to play next, in which coming up live this Sunday, I will roll that seed over on our Twitch channel towards the end of the stream. And that'll be the beginning of another three month play along that'll be capped off by a video just like this. A special thanks goes out to Queen Calero and Gabby Gabs for administrating the Chaos Crew play along experience. Calero personally spends a lot of painstaking effort going through save files and compiling screenshots so that I can put them together in a video for all of us to enjoy. And another thanks to all the community members who participated in the Chaos Crew play along and took the time to submit their save file or their screenshot. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of each of these colonies and if you're looking forward to the next video presentation of the play along. So until next time, much love, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.